Welcome back to the channel. And this week, we've got a special double dose of Worst of the Week. And this really isn't all that bad of a comic book. We're talking about Steelworks number one. Lane Kramer has been waiting for this for months now. It's finally here. Michael Dorn, a.k.a. Worf. I'm a big Star Trek fan, so I definitely knew who that was. Kind of strange that he's writing a comic book. He's also got Sammy Bossery as the artist on this one. And here with me, as always, is Doc for Steelworks number one. How you doing? Could be better. But honestly, this is not the worst comic I've read this week. No, no, this is like the most bare bones by the by the numbers comic book story I've ever read. And I don't mean that in a terrible way. Like, it's pretty predictable. There's nothing new really happening here. And certainly the story arc and the motivations of villains, and all that stuff are, are pretty paint by numbers stuff. But hell, in an industry where a lot of stuff is really bad, this isn't too bad. It's no, acceptable. It's, it's, it's really not. I mean, it's not great by any stretch. Uh, if this was the only comic book that was that somebody ever read, would they ever pick up another comic book? Probably not. It, it's it's not offensively bad, which you know in modern comics is kind of a you know, compliment. Yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 a little bit of a compliment. Granted, I not like, an original thought in this comic book though. I just want people to yeah. know that. No, <laughs> you've read there, this story or versions of it about a billion times. Yeah, this is there is nothing here even remotely approaching a uh, an original idea. This is this has Justin Hammer, Lex Luthor, every bad guy corporatist in history as the as the bad guy. What if we didn't need to rely on superheroes as the the main kind of through line on this comic? I liked it better when Stormwatch Team Achilles did it. So no, this is there is nothing original whatsoever in this comic book. And if you came here for a superhero comic, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Now, there's not a lot of superheroics yet. Once the story progresses, I imagine we will get that. Let's talk about the art from Sammy Bossery first. There are a couple of splash pages that are somewhat interesting and well done. But for the most part, this comic book is just illustrations. There's no visual storytelling. There's not really a lot of kinetic energy. The line work is fine. The illustrations do look good. But if you're looking for something exciting, kinetic, that actually has visual storytelling, you're not really going to get it in this comic book. No, you're not. But in his defense, he wasn't given anything to work with, with any action scenes actually occurring. If he doesn't have a lot of energy to it, it's because there's not much energy to this comic book at whatsoever in the plot, in the um, overall storytelling. I can't really blame him for that, but it's acceptable. It's it's. Passing. It's good illustrations, but it, yeah. it's just, you know, it is what it is. We're seeing this a lot, especially on the smaller tier uh, DC books lately, where they're they're putting pretty ba basic bones art on the stories themselves. But they have a bunch of uh, basic bitch writers anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Let's get into the story. And I think uh, Michael Dorn, a.k.a. Worf, does a pretty good job just stating the purpose of what John Henry Irons is doing. He's decided that he doesn't want Metropolis to rely on the Superman family anymore. So Metropolis is going to become like self-sustaining or whatever. So now we have Steelworks Towers instead of like Stark Towers. And he's going to take a power source that was returned from War World. And he's going to put it in Metropolis and create all this defensive network and give the people of Metropolis the means to protect themselves and rely less on Superman and the Superman family. And he's putting down the hammer. At least that's what he's telling people publicly. I feel like we're just in the first act of Avengers 2. Avengers Age of Ultron, because this is the exact premise that Tony Stark started with in that movie and that a dozen other comics and movies have have done over the years. It's basically every one of Lex Luthor's plots as well. I don't mean to imply that there's anything underhanded about this. He just wants people to not have to rely on superheroes because he makes a valid point in all of his unending monologue for like the first six pages of this book. There were a couple of gem quotes in it with you know him talking about how relying on somebody to always bail you out will lead you to complacency. So John Henry Irons is just an engineer yeah. and he quits a mayor trek. That's part of the story here. Yet somehow on an engineer's salary, then he quit his job so he doesn't have new income coming in. He was able to to build an entire tower. Apparently the city funded it. I feel like Mr. Dorn doesn't understand much about uh, the way that business loans work or uh, how government grants work. I don't think he would be uh, able to just go quit his job and be like, yeah, I'm going to build a uh, whole defensive network for this entire city. 
and you should give me a skyscraper to do it in. Yeah, and the skinny would be like, oh, yeah, sure. The only drawback to this comic book that I saw with the characterization of John Henry Irons is he does come off exceptionally naive in this, as if he's never been a superhero before a day in his life. Like when he's talking to, uh, I think it's Lana Lang, who they're engaged or whatever, he's like, yeah, we need to empower the people. And yeah, just taking this power source from this faraway planet, you know, where where they were having like gladiator battles and powering our city and using that to, to power the defenses, nothing bad could ever come of this. And not relying on Superman, you know, he'll just be able to go off and do his own thing. It's like, act like you've been here before. You know this isn't going to work because he's not going to like run it by himself. He's going to have to give over, over all these defense networks to the government themselves what happens when you give people in power like political power like new uh defensive capabilities and stuff like that they're gonna turn them back on the people i know he's been an associate of superman for 30 years now lex has been elected president in the interim and he also knows how many issues that superman's had with lex completely being wildly unethical And he's seen other politicians, both at the local, state, and national level, be very, very unethical. So the likelihood that he would want to turn this over to them, limited. He's not that dumb. Yeah, plus Batman wouldn't let him do it anyway. So he just came off as a little bit kind of stupid, naive, as if he was living in Utopia rather than the DC Prime universe. We do get to meet this villain. His name is Charles Walker III, and he has a bone to pick with John Henry Irons, because as an engineer, he quit Ameritrek and he dropped the stock prices, which obviously hit him in the in the wallet. And he knows that giving free power away to the people of Metropolis will hurt his ability to, you know, stomp his foot on the little guy. And it's like the most cliched villain, especially in the last five years, where he's a really rich white guy that doesn't like poor people. Yeah. And he wants to exploit them. That's just going to use the ability to have to control the power to enrich himself come on guys you could you could do something a little better this stuff would have been laughed out of the room in the 50s thorn you're you're what you're in hollywood right you can come up with something better than this because this is some serious basic bitch villain motivation here at least he's evil i'll give him that at least he isn't like one of those stupid nuanced villains where really it's not his fault that he's having to do bad things. He was just put in a bad position. At least he's at least he's evil, I guess. Well, no, they're already starting that with the only reason I'm doing this is because John Henry Irons tanked the stock price and I need to all the cup all the people that also work at Ameritrek and all the people that rely on us. That's why we gotta do this. No, it's it's some serious cheese ball, lame villain motivation with a seriously paint by numbers design on this villain and i wish then, he had a monocle that would have made it better yeah i mean this is he's got a cane he's got a suit, he's got he's a got cane the, he's got the three-piece flashy suit the <laughs> the evil goatee thing and the the round glasses yeah no he's he is your most cliche dc villain of the last 30 years and and honestly his his plot here you don't even understand what his actual motivation is well, you mean you understand? He wants to take down the tower because they screwed over the stock prices. That, 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 I'm sorry, I, that came out wrong. You don't understand what his actual plan is here. He no, you don't even know some, what he did to the poor guy that he yeah irradiated or whatever. I assume yeah, he's making him into a super powered villain. I, I assume so, but it just kind of ends and like kind of throws just, him on his ass. Yeah, they they throw. What him if out he the, turns around and kicks your ass? You don't look like you're super powered. Exactly. Like, they shoot him with some magic ray that he says, oh, it'll only hurt for a second, and then they throw him out the door. There's no coherent, like, villain plot here. Well, I think it's going to be be opened up. I, we, we only got the motivations and hints of what he's going to do. There was a final page on this one, and I definitely want to talk to you about this one, Doc. Natasha Irons puts on the suit as, apparently, people are infiltrating Steelworks ground level. But then she apparently has a private army behind her. That's the way. Why would seemed. anyone trust these guys if they have their own army? That doesn't feel like it's on the up and up. If you're an engineering company that wants to supply power to the city, but you have your own private army? Yeah, that seems a little weird. Um, and additionally, how in the fuck is he funding? What business loan includes for also my private army? 
Yeah, it was what? strange. I was like, why would the city trust these people? They've got like their own set of mercenaries sitting in the building. I feel like this is somehow supposed to be part of his plan for not needing superheroes. The, his no supers thing. Police force that doesn't work for the city, but works for him personally. Yeah, I feel like that's... That's a villain that's plot, gonna, Doc. Yes, it is. It's a villain plot. How many times have like private military contractors been the bad guy? Man, in, I just remember RoboCops the first time it happened. They're oh, yeah, generally you said the magistrate over in Batman. Yeah, this is just Steelworks private military contractor. Yeah, it seemed weird. Like no one would ever trust these people once they found out that they had their own tanks and shit. Not in the slightest. Yeah, he's doing a villain plot, but the villain's doing kind of just a chaos thing and a revenge thing. And there's some dude with blonde hair that got zapped with Apparently a ray John gun. John Henry and- Irons killed his wife. Yeah, well, maybe she died because. The stock prices went so low he couldn't feed her anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, I think his kids got killed in a battle with steel, and his wife died because he lost his job because Ameritech stock went down and he got fired, and now he couldn't pay for his wife's medical treatment, so she died. It'd be better if he couldn't pay for her food and she just starved out. (laughs) I'd be mad. I don't know, Doc. I... If you want to read this comic book, I'm not going to tell you it's terrible. It's 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 very basic, paid by numbers, not original stories or whatever. But in today's market, if you got to read it, something, this isn't something that you should avoid. How's that? That's the best I could say about the comic book. It is painfully average. Welcome to the end of the video. As I said, this was a special edition of the Words of the Week. If you missed the review from yesterday, X-Men 23, which is a substantially worse comic book than Steelworks number one, in my opinion, in Doc's opinion, I believe, definitely check this out right now. You got to see this one to believe it. Cyclops looks like an enormous bitch in this comic book. There's also a link in the video description.